you doing? Welcome back to my channel, Disney Princess Mum and Wife. My name is Sarah and if you're new here, welcome. My channel is everything Disney and family life. Um, so, um, my, on my last video, we will have, uh, you will have seen we, our trip announcement. We are going to uh, Florida again this year. Uh, we're staying at Walt Disney World and Universal and on International Drive. Uh, so I thought with it coming up very, very quickly now, I thought I would uh, do a little planning video for you on how to plan your perfect holiday, Florida holiday in three easy steps. So sit down, get comfy, pause me right here, put the kettle on and get a cuppa in your favorite Disney mug. We have got a lot to discuss today and a lot to plan. So, excuse me if I'm looking down because I have wrote some notes down just uh, so I don't forget anything. So if I'm looking down, that's why. So, uh, today's video, we're gonna plan your perfect uh, Florida holiday in three easy steps so step one so the first thing you really need to do uh, before anything really is decide on your finances um, so you want to decide on a budget so the easiest thing to do here uh, is make an income and expenditure uh, table um, so basically, if you don't know what one of those is, uh, you would say on a Word document or a piece of paper or whatever, uh, make a table and you would um, write down all of your income, so separately what you get in, uh, in your income uh, and then monthly or weekly or however you want to do it. Um, and then you write, you calculate that and you write down the total of your uh, monthly income. Um, and then on the other side of the table, um, I will put an example here in the video so that you can uh, see what I mean. On the other side of the table, um, <coughs> excuse me, I've got a bit of a cold. Hello, hello lady. Uh, you would make uh, a list of um, your expenditure. So that would be any bills that are coming out, any food shopping, uh, anything that you spend throughout the month. So then you would calculate that and that would be your total expenditure. And that, so then you would, um, you would take your income and your expenditure, you would uh calculate your income and take away what your total expenditure for the month was and then whatever you were left with would be your disposable income um and that kind of is your budget per month what what you have spare to uh to spend give or take you know um bits it's not always accurate because things come out come up during the month um so you know it's a rough a rough idea of how much disposable income you have um, during uh, during the month or at the end of the month or whatever. Uh, so you would work out that and then you would work out how much you wanted to put aside a month for uh, for the for the holiday. Um, you can use all of your disposable income if you wish. If not, you can put half, a third, whatever. It, it's whatever works for you but at least you've got it written down and you kind of know where you're at and then you can decide on on your own personal budget and it's different for everyone different people have different amounts of money and you know so it's what you feel comfortable with spending and putting aside for for the holiday so that's your first thing you need to do is decide on your budget and decide how much you're going to put away each month for um for your holiday so then the next thing um you would need to decide is how long you want to go for um we like to go for uh a month four weeks at the most um 
and uh, we well last year we did three weeks this year we decided to do 30 days just to give us an extra couple of days uh, to do other bits um, so but I mean it's up to you again it what it's what works with with your family and your family's needs and what you want to do what you want to achieve and, and all of that sort of thing so um, you need to <coughs> decide on your length of stay <clears throat> do you want to stay two weeks three weeks four weeks longer what? even if you wanted to um so so yeah decide on your length of stay because that will uh affect your price or decide how you know uh, basically you know how long you stay um would determine how much it is because obviously the longer you stay the more expensive it is but anyway decide on how long you want to stay i would say depending on what you want to do i would say minimum two weeks um possibly three but two weeks minimum a week i've done a week before and you can't really get a lot in for just a week so um so i would say minimum two weeks um longer if you can you don't have to but if you can go for longer um and then you um when you're deciding how long you want to go for decide on the time of year <coughs> <coughs> excuse me um you decide on the time of year that you want to go so there's a lot of thing uh, fingers there's a lot of uh factors that come into um what time of year you want to go um we do like to go in the summer because we don't mind the heat but not everybody likes the hot humid heat in the middle of summer in florida um, if you're not very good with heat, I would uh, suggest going um, in the cooler months. Um, not that there are many cool months in Florida. It's probably hot more or less all year round. But I'd say um, if you want to go in the summer, if you want to go when it's a bit cooler, um, or if you want to plan your uh, trip around any special events that are going on, for example, if you want to do um, Mickey's Scary Halloween Party or Mickey's Merry, Very Merry Christmas Party or Halloween Horror Nights at Universal, uh, anything like that. Or if you want to do any of the... I'm sorry. I'm sorry about the dog. Um, if um, you want to do any of the festivals, uh, like at Epcot, like you've got the um, Food and Wine Festival, you've got the... Um, flower uh festival um the arts festival at epcot so if there's any like particular events a run disney event for example if you want to do one of them that also determines on uh what time of year um you want to go so you need to think about that what time of year you want to go um and if there's you know if you want to coincide it with any special events that are going on so that's important to decide when you want to go or if you're restricted to school holidays like we are at the moment you you might only be able to go in school holidays um, or there might be times of the year that you want to avoid like uh, busy peak periods uh, or spring break, break periods that can be quite busy you know so so there's a lot of things to think about what on what time of year and when to go uh, and what's what's important for you um, so basically the whole thing is what works for you you need to do what works for you not what your best friend says or what your granny says or your neighbor down the road says or what whatever always plan it around what is best for your family's needs your family circumstances your financial circumstances um, plan it but what works best for you and how you're going to get the most out of your holiday um, so you can listen to opinions and that that's absolutely fine you can take on ideas but at the end of the day do what works for you so the next uh, thing in step one um, that you can do is you can list the places you want to go and all your must do's so this uh, this ties into uh, what time of year you want to go um, so if you want to do uh, like I said before the festivals or uh, one of the special events then list those down list if it's a must do um, and basically plan what you want to do where you want to go 
do you want to go to both Disney and Universal? Do you want to go further afield? Do you want to go to Kennedy Space Center? Do you want to go for a beach day at Clearwater or, or you know, something like that? Um, so you need to you need to decide on uh, that as well. Again, that ties into what time of year you want to do. So list those must dos and the places that you that are a must. You must go. <coughs> it also um, ties into your budget as well. Whether you can afford to only do one park, two parks, you know, or you know what, whatever. So make a list of places that you must do, must go. What maybe you don't have to do or can wait for another time or whatever uh make make that list um and then the next thing to do if you have decided on your budget your length of stay what time of year you go in any must do's so you've decided yes we want to go uh, we want to go at this time of year we've got this much we can afford this uh, we want to do this this and this so yes we're definitely going to do it so you've decided that yes you're gonna do it you're gonna do your your um your florida holiday so once you've decided all of that the next thing important thing in step one is to apply for or renew your passport so if you haven't got any um uh, if you if you or your children or any family members friends haven't got um, a passport it can take 10 to 12 weeks it's usually a bit faster than that but it can take about 10 to 12 weeks to um, for your uh, passport to come. So make sure before you book anything that you have uh, you have a valid passport. Um, and if you have got a passport that's about to expire, then make sure you renew that in plenty of time. So make sure you've got um, you've got the passport. Um, the next one uh, which links to the passport um, is um, is applying for your esters or your visas um, hello ignore him um, so yeah so um, tailing off from them it's important before you book anything to um, apply for your ESTER or any visas you need. So your ESTERs are basically a visa waiver, um, it's the visa waiver program uh, for certain countries, uh, UK, uh, European countries are all that. So make sure you check uh, whether you need a visa or ESTER and apply. And if you do, can get an ESTER then, um, apply for that in plenty of time before you book anything before you part with any money because there may be problems with your esther you may be denied an esther and then that way you need to go down the visa route and there's a lot of long waiting periods if you need to uh, get a visa for travel into the us um so make sure you um apply for that and make sure that you've got those important travel documents before you book anything and part with um a lot of money um or get into uh you know different contracts where things are non-refundable um or anything like that so make sure first of all you've got valid passport and uh, a valid esther um or um or a valid visa that's important if you have got all those sorted so you've got your budget sorted, you've got your, your things to do, your time of year sorted, your travel documents sorted. If all that has gone through and is fine, then you are ready to move on to step two. Now, step two is the kind of booking process um, that you need you to do. So the first thing in step two that you need to do is you need to decide how you're going to book your holiday there are uh, multiple different ways to book your holiday um and not every way is right for every person uh people like to do it different ways um so or what you're comfortable with so there's there's three different ways that you can um that you can book your holiday 
so you can do a package holiday which is like literally everything in one with one uh one person one uh travel agent airline uh everything's included so that includes your uh flight your hotel your car hire transfers etc like everything is booked in one place um and and that's that you've got everything together uh so um some people like to do that so that they know it's all in uh or you can uh book everything separately so by separately what i mean is uh you book your flight separately with a separate airline um and then you book your hotel or um uh, separately so you do everything separately with different providers um so some people like to do that get like a hotel package um and then they like to book their flights separately you can do that it's completely up to you um or you can do a custom trip which this time is what we have done so a custom trip um you can't do this on virgin airlines I noticed that but on BA um, you can book a uh, a custom trip so um, you can book your flight separately you can decide what dates you want your flights out then you can book multiple hotels or multiple destinations or you know you can tailor make your holiday to what you want and then they and then they tie it up all in a night nice neat package and that's your price they work out the price for you so that is what what we've done this time um so so yeah those are the three different ways that you can that you can book your trip uh the next thing is you need to decide whether you want to stay on site off site or do a split stay so some people prefer to stay on site at either disney disney world or universal um because they you know you get if you stay if you stay on site you get extra perks um so like uh, for example if you stay on site at uh, disney world you can take advantage of the free park transportation uh you get early magic um hours well it was magic hours i can't remember what it's called now but you get to enter the park um like an hour before the park opens up to the rest of the public um, if you stay on site you get first dibs on virtual queues um, if you stay in a deluxe hotel you get uh, evening hours you know there's there's all sorts of different parts and the same for Universal as well you you can take advantage of the transport the early hours um, and you know different hotel perks so there are perks to staying on site so if that's important to you then you need to decide whether that will be best for you also a thing to um to mention is as well if you're budgeting for like if you haven't got car hire and you're budgeting like ubers or taxis that if you stay off site you need to work out how much it's going to be to travel to and from the parks every day and whether it actually works out cheaper to stay on site uh, we decided that this time because we found that when we stayed on international drive last time every time we were going to disney it was costing 90 dollars return each time um and it was extortionate to be honest <coughs> and we worked out that it was actually cheaper to stay on site this time so that's what we have done we learned from that but i mean you know depending on on what your budget is you may you might not mind doing that or you might have a car hire but if you do hire a car you've also got to think of um car park charges and and things like that so there's a lot to think about with uh staying on site if you stay off site you can get a cheaper hotel but then you don't have the staying on site perks you don't have the early magic hours the early entry um or things like that so you don't have the perks uh and you also have to factor in how much it's going to um like i said before how much your um ubers or taxis are going to cost or how much your car parking every day is going to be um so you have to factor that in as well so 
it might look cheaper and it might seem cheaper but when you factor in all the other bits that go along with it maybe it's best for you to stay on site it's completely up to you but you really have to work that out for yourself and work it into your budget and kind of break it down and and see what what's going to be best um for you um because let's face it you want it to be financially good i suppose i'm trying to think of the word uh, feasible but you also want ease as well so you need to think about what works best for your family um so yeah or you can do a split stay like we are doing this time so we're doing 10 nights on disney we're doing 10 nights on universal and then we're doing 10 nights on international drive so you can decide to do that as well um so you can break your holiday up and decide you want to um stay however many nights number of nights in one one hotel uh and then another if you want to do disney then universal and and kind of take advantage of both of those perks and that works for you and the, or you can stay on site for a little bit and then uh off site to make it cheaper that's a, that's another way to go um so yeah it, it basically is what works for you so you've got those options and you've just got to you've just got to do what's best for you and work it work it out what's best um and you know and what works best best for your budget uh when you factor everything in um so you've got a number of different options uh to do that so on or off site or a split stay you're quite welcome to do a split stay uh, even if like you want to stay on site but you want to like stay at two different hotels you can even do a split stay uh, through that so at Disney we're staying at Animal Kingdom Lodge and say you wanted say you're on a bit of a budget but you wanted to stay at those deluxe resorts for a, a couple of nights because just for the experience or um, or you wanted to get the deluxe resort um, perks you know something like that you could do a couple of nights at um, one of the deluxe resorts and then the rest of your stay at one of the value resorts um, so you could you could even do that that's that works well as well so again there's a lot of different options <coughs> excuse me um, that you can do so it, again it it all ties into what you want what you want to get out of it and um, what experience you want to get out of it and and what works best for you and your family um, so once you've decided uh, how you want to stay you then need to decide on whether you want to do a hotel or a villa so whether you want to book an on-site hotel an off-site hotel a bit of both um, or you want to stay at a villa if um now i wouldn't recommend staying at a villa if you don't have car hire it's a bit more difficult because the villas are a bit uh, far out but if you're hiring a car then um then by all means look at villas villas work well for especially big family groups uh you've got your own space you've got your it's like a it's like a house really isn't it you've got your own cooking um utilities and and everything like that so a lot of people who hire cars do like to stay in villas for the ease of that um but i would personally i mean it is doable to do a villa um with not having a car but it makes it more difficult um i would say um so my recommendation would be if you're not hiring a car then maybe stay away from the villa but if you still want that um villa experience then i would go for uh a something like a condo where it it's basically it's in like a a hotel resort but it's like um it, it's like a little mini villa in a way so you've got bedrooms you've got a fully fitted kitchen you've got you know you've got washing facilities um laundry facilities so it's like staying in a villa but not staying in a villa so that might be an option if you still want all those amenities 
to stay in a villa but want to stay more central want to stay more within the international drive area uh which is easy for transport links and everything there is that option on disney as well you can choose to stay in a dvc resort villa but they are extremely expensive so uh, this is budget dependent obviously um so you could you could choose to do that um again you know whatever works for you and your budget um so once you've decided on um how you're going to book your trip where you're going to stay what you want what you want to stay in hotel or villa so now is the time for the fun bit is to search and you need to get different quotes and price up and look at all different um travel agents and airlines and so the main um the main airlines you have uh that fly to orlando is british airways um virgin atlantic tui um and Aer Lingus um are the are the main ones that people usually use um you do get um i think is it north airline now or something i can't remember but there are a, a few other airlines that do fly over to orlando um but those are the main uh, uh the main airlines that offer um package holidays and flights to orlando um so you need to you need to look at those price it up price, and also look at different scenarios so look how much <coughs> excuse me it would be to book it separately as a package as a customs trip so always like look do play with different dates if you can um look at booking it separately and write it all down make sure you write a list and write it all down so you know get quotes from different places like travel agents um your independent travel agents um ocean florida uh disney themselves uh universal um airlines um do package holidays um so price it up as a package and separately and as a custom trip whatever works for you look at the different prices they're offering and go for the best price uh within your budget so um we've booked with ba because they always come out on top price wise i i do like booking with ba um the only downside to booking with ba is that you can only book 11 months out so um with them the price is always good um but you have to wait until 11 months out before you can book uh book through them but they are really good because um once once you do are able to book through them um their prices are phenomenal they are absolutely fantastic um and you pay a low deposit which is around two fifty two one depending on how how many people there are in your party but um you get um two two fifty three hundred depending on how many of the you are um or where you're staying um depends on the deposit but it's very low deposit and then you've got six weeks before departure to pay the balance off so i really like booking with BA because you can book with that low deposit and if you also have the Avius points as well you can use your Avius points uh, which I do as well I um, I save up all my Avius points um, and I put it towards um, my bookings so that takes some money off in fact this time round I actually paid my whole deposit with Avius uh, points because I was awarded 50,000 Davis points due to a complaint I made with the um we had a whole nightmare which I will go into into another video um coming coming back last year so they awarded me 50,000 Davis points and I actually got in the end I got half the price of my holiday back um through compensation uh which was amazing so I was able to use that to pay some of it um 
which was really good but they are they're low deposits so i recommend ba virgin is the next one but they are a little bit more expensive and their deposits are a bit expensive as well um <coughs> tui is really good but they don't fly into mco <coughs> they fly into um melbourne airport which is about an hour away from orlando's uh, but they do put on transfers um and it is acquired to airports and you can also book with them uh with no deposit if you book far out in advance um and then you set up a monthly direct debit with them you can you can do that and pay off monthly that so they have really good de deals so i would recommend looking at british airways virgin atlantic and um and tui uh that's where you're going to get the best deals um so so yeah look at the different airlines price it up get different quotes look you know each way and every way on how to book it and see what works best for your budget so once you've decided on that you need to book your flights and um oh and i meant to say as well sorry if you book with um ba a uh, flight and hotel together you do save uh 30 percent on on the price uh by booking it as um a, a package so that's that's really good as well um so yeah so once you've decided book your flights pay your deposit and get all that booked in once you've booked your flights also don't forget to um book and organize any disability assistance you may need with the airline get that all sorted if you do need um assistance you are able to select um your seats for free um as well so that's that's a nice little thing so you can sit where best where it's best for you on the plane so make sure you um you get all that uh, sorted as soon as you book the flights and you've got your confirmations and everything uh, so that they know how to help you if you need it um, and then <clears throat> and then once you've decided on your flights and where you're flying from you may want to book an airport hotel the night before I always recommend traveling depending on how far away you are from the airport I like to I mean we have to we have to fly when we fly BA we have to fly from Gatwick because they don't fly out with Heathrow. Heathrow um is only twenty minutes away from us. Um but they don't fly out to Orlando um from Heathrow. Um they fly out of Gatwick. So it's about an hour away for us. So even though it's only an hour, I still like to go the night before and book an airport hotel um just so I haven't got any of that stress going on with times and traffic and everything I am there I can do the twilight check-in and everything so for my own peace of mind I do like to go the night before check into an airport hotel and spend the night so you may want to do that you don't have to do that depending on how far away from the airport you are you can travel um, on the day uh, to, to the airport it's completely up to you that is personal preference but I personally like to book an airport hotel for the night before. Uh, and also in that, you also need to make sure that you book your airport um, parking. If you were driving to the airport, you need to look at airport car parking. Um, <coughs> and that we don't have a car, so we don't have to worry about that. But also, um, you, uh, you, know, you need to sort that out as well. So once you've done that, you then need to book your hotel or villa. So depending on what you want, how you want to book it, if you've booked your uh, flight separately, then you can book your hotel or villa separately. Or as a package, you may want to book a hotel and flights together. Um, so it depends on what you want to do. This time around, um, we have done it a little bit differently. We have booked the um the flights and universal portion and coco key portion of the holiday with british airways um as a package and then we also we booked our um 
Disney portion uh, separately, uh, not through Disney themselves. I like to actually book through Attraction Tickets Direct. Um, they are absolutely fantastic. They, they come out on top price-wise all the time. Um, and I really recommend booking with them. You have until six weeks before departure to pay your balance. You only have to book with um, a hundred pound deposit. You can book both your um, Disney Hotel and Universal Hotel through them. They offer. They also offer um, Disneyland Paris as well. Um, but we booked through them last year, um, and we got we got money off. They do like. Um, 10% off or whatever um, they have different offers out on throughout the year so look out for those discount codes um, and uh, but with uh, booking through them if you're booking a hotel you also have to book your park tickets as well so it's an all in one price with them so you've got your hotel and park tickets we got the dining credit offer because when we booked the dining plan wasn't back yet but we did get 86 pound, uh, no, pounds <laughs> 86 dollars um per room per night dining credit and we also got a free 400 dollar um disney gift card uh that was through the offer as well um and money off the package price so we got a really good deal uh with those so again look at don't just look at the airlines look at, at different um different places to book your hotel um you can look at booking.com if you like attraction tickets directs um you know all those different places so book your hotel or villa either through your airline as a package with your flights or separately or custom trip like we have done so we've booked two hotels and flights together and then one one separately um, and then you need to decide on whether you're going to hire a car or you going to um, or not um, so you can also book your car hire through the airline as well uh, or you can book that separately it's completely up to you remember to get quotes for that uh, and see which is the cheapest I usually find if you book through the airline it's all paid for and it's all sorted and it's their responsibility so um i don't know too much about the car hire because we never hire a car so i can't really go into that too much but just ask when you book if you've got any questions or ask the airline if you book through the airline they're very helpful and they will help you um, if you're not hiring a car then you need to book your transfers again you can do this through the airline if you're booking through the airline um, or you can book separately there is a lot of um, transfer companies that you can book through separately or if you're going to Disney if you're staying on site Disney you can book Mears Connect which we have done so we have booked because we're going to Disney first we've booked transfers through Mears Connect which used to be the Disney uh, magical express but the free one but now it's not free <coughs> so um you do have to pay for it now um but it's a, a coach that takes you straight from the airport to your disney hotel i think it was like 16 dollars each or something so not too bad and then i booked separately um a transfer to take us from coco key back to uh, the airport um, so again look for uh, transfer quotes you can either do it through your airline or you can do it separately um, and then you need to uh, book your park tickets so if you're doing a hotel and park ticket you can get a whole deal uh, or you can book your park tickets separately I like to use places like uh, Traction Tickets Direct and Florida Ticks they are usually the best ones uh, to pay for to pay for to uh, book with because they have various offers throughout um, throughout the year you get Black Friday deals they do payday deals where you get 7% off 10% off um, certain deals on certain attractions like with uh, Kennedy Space Center they were offering a uh, free lunch with a, a Kennedy Space Center ticket um so they're good sites to look at also orlando attractions is a good site 
the only issue with Orlando Attractions are is that um, if you're looking to pay a deposit um, for your park ticket and then um, you are wanting to pay it off throughout the month with Orlando Attractions you're unable to do that you've got to pay it outright whereas with um, Attraction Tickets Direct and uh, Flo um, Florida Ticks um, you can uh, pay like a deposit I think it's like uh, with Florida Ticks it's um, it's £20 per person deposit um, so for us it's £80 deposit uh, for four of us and then you've got up until six weeks before uh, your books to go um, to pay off the um, balance and with um, attraction tickets direct it depends when the offer is on but you can usually it's £25 per person deposit so for us for four of us <coughs> excuse me it's a hundred pound deposit or sometimes they have a ten pound deposit offer on so they offer um tickets to book with a ten pound um deposit um uh so that's good so always look out for that offer when it's on it comes off it comes on and off um but that's really good um, I think I booked Discovery Cove with the uh, £10 offer and it was like only £40. Uh, it was £40 deposit instead of £100 deposit. So always keep an eye out for those special offers um, that go on. Um, so yeah, so book your park tickets. Look at those uh, websites. Um, oh, when you go on uh, to the company's websites they're not always the cheapest like if you want universal and disney tickets it's best to buy them in the uk because you get the uk exclusive tickets which is 14 day tickets um and with disney you also get um memory maker in it whereas if you bought it um at disney then you don't get memory maker um so you can buy your park tickets when you're out there but it often works out cheaper to buy them before you go and you do get UK exclusive tickets. So again, um, look around at different websites, different companies and work out the best ticket prices for them. Especially if you're booking on-site hotels, you usually have to book your tickets with them. So keep that in mind as well. But um, there's di there's different sites out there. My favourites are Attraction Tickets and Florida Ticks. Um, like I say, Orlando Attractions usually comes out cheapest than anywhere. But the only issue with that is you need to pay it all in one go. If you're able to do that, then great. Take that offer. Um, they're completely legit. I booked Gatorland last year through them um and it was it was seamless it was it was brilliant and also when you book your party tickets through um florida ticks and attraction tickets they often give you little freebies like um a ten dollars drink card or a uh eat and play card or things like that so you get little freebies like that savings vouchers and things um so yeah look at that so once you've done that you then need to book your travel insurance probably book your travel insurance actually before you book um your park tickets but make sure you have a comprehensive travel insurance because uh if god forbid anything went wrong medically it's very expensive out there obviously so make sure you have a good uh travel insurance if you have um any uh pre-existing medical conditions make sure that your travel insurance is going to cover those pre-existing conditions um i usually like to get an annual policy because it usually works we go with stay sure stay sure is really good especially if you've got pre uh pre-medical conditions um and we get unlimited um medical expenses with them and the annual policy is usually cheaper than the single trip policy and with the annual policy you're able to pay monthly direct debit so uh that's good if you're on a budget and you need to spread the cost uh definitely um do that that's really good but look get different travel insurance quotes 
what you're going to need for your needs it's very personal um and just get those quotes before you decide uh and you know because you're going to need different different level different people need different levels of cover so that is completely personal to you and what you need so just get the honest needs get the different quotes um and then decide what's going to be best for you and then either decide whether you want to do an annual policy or a single trip policy it's whatever works for you but make sure you have travel insurance especially when going to the us you must have travel insurance it's it's so important so make sure that is one of the first things you book when you book your holiday is your travel insurance because if anything goes wrong oh you're going to be in trouble um touch wood it doesn't go wrong for you but you know you never know so make sure you've got it and make sure that you're covered uh the next thing uh what you need to do in step two is if you have any pets or dogs cats guinea pigs whatever <laughs> um you need to book uh your pet care either arrange with a family member or book kennels or a cafery or whatever you need to do get that booked in because especially if you need kennels um then you need to book quite far in advance um with with those um so to make sure especially at peak periods during the summertime um, you will need to book in advance so make sure you've got any pet care needs taken care of and that your little furry friends are, um, are sorted so once you've um, booked at everything and everything's got paid you've paid your deposits or you've paid outright depending on how you've you've paid for it um, the best thing uh, I like to do is to create a list of all the things that I've booked so the airline the hotel the transfers, the park tickets, anything that I've paid for, I like to um, I like to make a list of everything. Then I write down the balance owed if I've paid deposits or if I've paid something outright or I've paid a, a balance off, I write paid. Um, so I write down the balance, the due dates of the balance and also whether it's been paid. Um, I do so I can keep track of how much more I've got to pay um, so I like to do that so create a list of what's owing just so you can keep track the due dates and um, and every time you pay something off obviously adjust the balance that's on on your list I like to just do it on a word document and then I can delete and enter but at least it keeps you on track so that's a good tip to do create a list of what's owing what's been paid um, and the due dates of balances um, and also a good thing to keep you organized because I like to be organized it is absolutely ridiculous how organized I am in fact Andrew takes the mick out of me for being so organized I like to organize any confirmations the so booking confirmations ticket confirmations uh into um a separate email folder so i've got on uh in my inbox i've got a folder that says holiday documents and i literally when they come through i literally transfer them over into that holiday so that i've got it all in one place so i'm not having to search through my whole inbox to find a particular confirmation i may need or whatever <coughs> excuse me so order um uh, order um create a folder in your inbox and transfer any confirmations any documents tickets the email tickets uh travel insurance documents anything like that um put it into um into a, a separate folder and keep it all together um so yeah so that is basically step two so that is step two you've done that and then once you've done all that in step two you are ready to move on to step three um the last step in your florida planning so in step three going tailing off from the last the last uh point in um in step two um organize uh travel documents into your folder um and also email anything to yourself so uh what i mean by this is email 
so scan uh, copies of your passports um, and email them to yourself um, um, what else have I got yeah the passports so anything like uh, like anything paper based or document based um, make sure that you always have an email copy email them to yourself and put them into your Florida uh, or your holiday folder just so that you've got a digital copy in case anything happens you lose anything just so you've got that so email them to yourself and put them in your email folder um, so that's a good thing so like copies of passports um, scan your passport into your computer <coughs> excuse me <clears throat> or your phone and then email uh, that to yourself and put it into your holiday folder in your inbox that way you've still got a copy of those important travel documents same with visas esters make sure you put all the ester documents in there and and things like that just in case you lose your hard copy uh, you need it you know you've got it there so always email everything to yourself and put it in your holiday folder uh, the next thing there's another folder that you need to organize and Andrew really takes the mick out of me for this and I, I will show you it I've got it right here the best thing for me I like to organize my travel documents my um my ticket confirmation um I like to have hard copies of, of everything I'm pretty old school I like to organize them into a travel folder or planner um this is my travel folder um so <laughs> andrew always takes the mic so i like to get one of these a4 portfolio um folders uh it's a bit like art port art portfolio folders and i literally on publisher i make up these little pages uh i design these on publisher um and i wrote where we're going the dates and everything um and you've got a little uh like it's like where you can change change them so it's multi-use you can use this for many holidays um so you just change it like when when you need to um and i've literally got um i've literally got flights i'm not going to show you any documents because obviously personal details in that so i'll just show you the um the headers i've got uh, a section for airport hotel uh and then i put the hotel then i've got um the transport option transfers um and then i've got a hotel Animal Kingdom Lodge. Uh, then I've got Hotel Universal uh, Endless Summer Resort. Uh, then I've got Hotel Coco Key Resort. So I've um, I've separated each hotel. Uh, these are all the hotel vouchers and confirmations. Then I've got uh, ticket confirmations. Um, so like that's like your park tickets and and things like that. And then I've got dining reservations for any dining reservations. I've got saving vouchers for any saving vouchers that I get with the tickets or I find. Um, and then I've got a section for travel insurance. Um, I'm not going to show you any of these because and then I've got a section for passports so i always print out a hard copy of um our passports um so that we've got a hard copy if we need them i've got a section for our esters so i print out a um i print out a hard copy of our esters now this is what the esters look like um and that's your um your electronic system for travel authorization so you'll need those approved um before you can do anything 
so I always print out a hard copy of them in case they ask for them and then I've got a section for um and then I've got a section for GP letters and any prescriptions that I need so um yeah so that is yeah that is my organization of a travel folder now you don't have to do this like i've done it but i like to do it that way um it just keeps me organized i know what i'm doing uh so you don't have to be that organized but i do recommend having a travel document folder with all your confirmations hard copies of passports etc in there because it keeps everything together uh, and I'm not saying that you will need a hard copy of your passport, but you know, anything can happen and you just, you just don't know, do you? So it's best to have those. Um, so yeah, so that's definitely, uh, something I recommend doing. So organize your travel documents and ticket confirmations, etc., into a folder, uh, like that. And also email those important travel documents to yourself as well so you have a digital copy <coughs> as well for any any situation so after you've done that the next thing you need to do is you need to make sure that you download any apps that you may need and then organize them into a folder on your phone so i've got them uh i've got a florida folder on my phone and um and I've organised all the apps that I will need for Florida. So what I mean by when I say apps is, um, I mean the Mind Disney Experience app, so any theme park apps, uh, Disney app, Universal app, Discovery Cove app, uh, anything like that that you, you will need. Um, so download, make sure you've got all those already downloaded um, and organise them into a folder so that they're easy to uh, to get to um so i'm just trying to think what else anything florida related any app that you need make sure that you've got it may differ for for everyone but just make sure you've got any apps that you need downloaded um the main ones being my disney experience uh and universal apps um and then tailing off onto the um from the apps one is you need to make sure you register if you're going to disney this might not you might not need to do this if you're not going to disney but uh if you are then you need to uh register for the my disney experience app so it would be your if you've got a disney account then you link your account to the disney experience app if not um, create one create a Disney account that way you can add your family on there as well um, so register for that and link all your tickets and your hotel reservation with the confirmation number to uh, to the uh, to the app so that you're all ready to go you can link your magic bands in there and um, and everything so um, make sure that you've got all that done pre uh, you know pre departure in a way uh, just so that you're organized and you don't have to do it while you're out there so make sure that you register and link your tickets and reservations for it um it's pretty self-explanatory i can do a video solely on the my disney experience app for you if you wish but um so let me know in the comments if you want me to do that i can do uh so um make sure you do that um uh, hello um and then um and then uh lady she's she's made me lose well my thought now um where was i oh yeah um and then 60 days before uh before you go if you're going to disney uh you can then make your dining reservations um so you can log on 60 days before you go so we can make ours from the 21st of this month which is exciting so you can make your disney dining reservations uh if you've got any table service uh restaurants you want to do make sure you book those 60 days in advance i can go uh into more detail on 
dining reservations and table service restaurants in another video um, but I won't in this one because this is going on for quite a while so make sure that you uh, do that book your dining reservations and print them out and make sure you've got a hard copy of those as well uh, then you can you need to order your currency and your travel cards uh, so the currency for the US is obviously the US dollar so look at the exchange rates I like to use John Lewis travel they usually for for cash anyway they give the best exchange rate in my opinion um, for uh, for currency for cash uh, but you can get it from Sainsbury's um, Tui you know all those places M&S any, anywhere like that that does travel currency or even the airport but my favorite one for cash is is john lewis because they seem to have the best exchange rate so keep an eye <coughs> <coughs> excuse me keep an eye on the um on the exchange rate and um order your your cash uh also order any any travel cards we have the post office post office travel card uh we use so or any travel cards you may use you can use travel cards like post office monzo revol um i've heard people use chase uh you can even just use your normal bank uh debit card or a credit card you can do that uh but whatever you want to do best for you uh, make sure that you have currency and uh, travel cards and make sure if you're going to be using your bank card make sure you inform your bank that you are going to the US just so that they don't uh, block block your card while you're out there uh, so just inform your bank that you're going so that they know that it's not like a fraudulent thing on or anything like that um, it's best just to inform them uh, so make sure you have all that sorted um, then something exciting make packing lists i know i'm again organized sarah uh so i like to make packing lists of different uh lists uh, i go into the notes app on my um on my phone and i write out different lists so i do a park bag list i do um toiletry list liquid bag list uh pre-departure list uh uh what else uh Andrew's clothes list, my clothes list, the boys clothes list, um, first aid kit list, uh, medication list, uh, I've already said that park bag list, you know, um, but I will show you anyway these these lists that I've got which is quite funny but you might not want to do as detailed as I do but I always do um, recommend that you make a list for packing so that you don't forget things and make a list of things that you still need to get i'll be doing nearest the time i'll be doing a packing uh, pack with me so we can go into the things that uh you you may you may need then um so yeah make packing lists and then you know what you've got what you need to get and and all that um and then uh nearer to the time before you go make any appointments so if you want to do it for any like hair appointments uh if you want mani pedis anything like that make any appointments like a week or two before you go make um so make any appointments for that um maybe if your dog needs to go to the groomers before they go off to the kennels make appointments for your dog so any appointments like that you need to do uh, make make appointments for those um, and then the last thing in step three is um, order any prescriptions needed so if you have prescription medication make sure you order those in plenty of time and also if you're going to if you think or you know you're going to run out of um, medication while you're on holiday ask your doctor if you can have like uh, two months because we because we go for four weeks so we always run out when when we're on so i always ask for uh two months worth of medication that on that um repeat request uh you may have to ring your doctor and ask that and just explain uh the situation what's happening you're going away so make sure you order that prescription in plenty of time um before you go away so that you've got that um so make sure you've got any 
uh, prescriptions and medication that you need that you'll need to take and also make sure that you you take a prescription list for you in case the customs ask you about any medication you take um, and also for controlled medication you will need to um, ask uh, your doctor for a doctor's letter <coughs> now bear in mind your doctor may charge for this um, or may not depending on on your practice um, but if you have controlled uh, drugs um, that are on the control list so do check on the on the FDA website whether your uh, med <coughs> medication <coughs> is um, is controlled or not over there in the US I take co me and Andrew take cocaine for our pain that is even though it's not controlled over here it's controlled over in the states so we have to have a doctor's note and um obviously jack's jack's adhd medication is also a controlled drug so he has to have a doctor's note uh for that to and all that's got to say is uh is that it's prescribed to them for their health and well-being um and what medication is prescribed to them now last year we didn't get asked for any of that we just went straight through but it's always best to have it um on hand if if you do ever get asked for um for things like that it's best to have it so make sure you have any doctor's notes and a bit or re and or repeat um uh, repeat prescription list if you have any prescription medication um it's for the customs when you get into the u.s now i'm not saying that you will be asked for it because we won't ask for it but i know I'm not, sorry about lady she's very noisy i know no in my look if i didn't have that documentation then i would be asked for it so it's better to have it and not be asked for it than to not have it and then be asked for it and then you've just caused a whole lot of problems for yourself so um yeah make sure you have all those important documents and keep a copy with you um so and also take a picture of it on your phone as well so you've got it digitally as well uh so yeah so that's it for step three so that is how you plan your uh your dream florida vacation or holiday if you're in the uk in three easy and manageable steps um so i hope you found all these tips in this video useful uh if you have any questions um pop them down in the comments below and i will uh happily answer them um to the best of my knowledge um also you can uh join like um different uh facebook groups there's like di there's various uh planning orlando disney universal planning groups uh on um on facebook that you can join um which there are a lot of members on there that give lots of tips who have been there like multiple times <coughs> so also join those for any uh tips as well that's a good a good place to be as well um very helpful so you can do that as well but if you have any questions uh pop them down in the comments below and I will try and ask them as best as I can to my knowledge um also any suggestions on any other videos planning videos you want me you would like me to do then uh pop those down in the comments below and I'll um and I will do those for you as well um so yeah I hope you found this video useful and I've kind of broken it down a bit for you because I know that um, planning a Florida holiday can be very overwhelming, especially if it's your first time. There's a lot to think about. I always think it's, you go on holiday to relax, but this isn't a relaxing holiday. There's a lot to think about. There's a lot to plan, um, you know. So, And when you're planning out your days as well um, for you know park days and that make sure you um put some rest days in there as well because it's very hot it's it's tiring your feet are gonna hurt you know so you are going to need those rest days so make sure you take into account uh when you're planning your your parks and your park days 
that you do put in um you do put in those rest days as well that's really important um just to just to recharge but do that enjoy your planning um and basically the last thing uh to do on your florida planning is pack go and just have the most amazing time you possibly can take loads of photos loads of videos just and make those magical memories with your family um and just have an, an amazing experience and don't worry if things don't go to quite to how you planned it while you're out there just go with the flow don't have a strict um plan or anything like that just go with the flow just enjoy make memories and you know just have the most amazing magical time because i tell you now once you go you get the florida bug you're gonna want to go again and again and again and again because hey that happened to us we went last year and we're going again and next year we're probably going again well we are but i put that but shh. um but yeah so um be warned once you go you'll get the bug and you want to keep going so you know but all i can say is um doesn't matter how much you plan uh for it or anything like that you know the main thing is is that you just go you relax you have fun and you just make those amazing magical memories whether it's a once in a lifetime trip or you plan on repeating it whatever just just make it one to remember and just have the most amazing time um and don't worry if not everything goes to plan you know it is what it is and and you'll do it you'll have an amazing time but i hope that this has given you some tips and ideas and made that planning process a little bit easier for you and you know where to start when it comes to planning your um your florida holiday or vacation um but yeah i know it's a lot to think about um and like i say if you have any questions just pop them down below and i'll be happy to answer them to the best of my ability and knowledge um so yeah that's it for today wow i have gone on for 72 minutes wow this is a big video <laughs> so i apologize so if you've made it this far thank you ever so much for watching thank you to all my subscribers uh new and um and old well old but uh my channel is slowly growing and i really appreciate it and i hope that you enjoy the content that i put out there uh yeah so <coughs> so yeah i hope you've enjoyed this video i'm not quite sure yet what the next one will be um i'm gonna have to think about it <laughs> uh but yeah in uh in the summer our 2024 florida vlogs will be up um, and I hope that you enjoy it and you come along for the ride with us. Um, if you made it this far, thank you so, so much for watching. Thank you so, so much for your support, for your, for your subscribing, for all your love, for all your sharing, everything. Um, I love you and I appreciate all the support that you give um, and all the love that you give. So thanks for watching, guys and i will see you in the next one take care much love bye